To be a data scientist is to accept that you'll be on a lifelong learning journey. And at the end of my videos, I often talk about how I am on that journey from being a newbie data scientist to hopefully one day being an elite data scientist. But if being an elite data scientist is a mountain, I'm still like very near to the bottom of that mountain. But I thought giving you my concrete plans of how I plan to get at least a couple of steps closer to this eventual lofty goal might give you a couple of ideas of what you could integrate into your learning strategy. Or at the very least, it can give you something to laugh whilst you listen to my plans. But regardless, here's five areas I want to focus on in 2023 to be a better data scientist. Whether we know it or not, we've all heard Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hour rule, which is basically that 10,000 hours of focused, deliberate practice at any skill will make you an expert at that. And I think technically it's actually been debunked, this magical 10,000 hour number. But regardless, doing anything for 10,000 hours isn't exactly going to make you any worse at it. So in terms of overall time spent learning, besides university or work, my plan is to spend 1,000 hours on data science related projects and learning throughout 2023. That breaks down to two hours, 44 minutes a day on average. This is gonna to be tough, but I think it is achievable. And these are the exact areas that I'll be spending those 1000 hours in and resources that I'll be using to achieve this. So in terms of specifics, I'll start off with how I plan to become a better generalist. The first area that I want to focus on is maths, which is crucial for data science. And to be honest, I want to stay sharp and know the fundamentals so well in terms of maths, because it is like, yeah, I will have the degree by the end of the year. But when you're in one specific job, like in my job, you will be exploiting one area of maths or one type of maths much more often than any other types. So naturally, your knowledge on all the other types will be slowly reducing. And I really want to stay agile with my math because you never know at my job when I'll suddenly be required to do a different element of maths. And I don't want to have to start basically relearning that. But at the same time, you never know when you have to find another job and that job might require a whole different skill set of maths and you have to be sharp for those numerical reasoning tests for interview exams and that sort of thing. So that's why I need to stay on top of my maths. And the main book I will be using to achieve this is this one right here, Practical Statistics for Data Scientists, which is basically a staple for anyone who's tried to learn data science. I actually read it quite a lot when I was first getting into it and going the self-taught route. And yeah, honestly, if I just revise the key areas of this book, I'll be absolutely fine. I'll also be revisiting some of my favorite math channels for data science, like 3Blue, 1Brown, and Ridvik Maths, both of who helped me pass my data science exams because I was struggling, so thank you for that. But this time, I'll make sure I'm taking detailed notes as I go along so that I can always refer to them quickly instead of having to do this again, relearn everything from scratch. This improved knowledge of math will also help me with my machine learning knowledge because that's another area I want to expand on this year. It's not quite a focus, but just becoming more and more skilled in the field of machine learning. And on the topic of becoming a better general data scientist is learning how to take projects end to end really easily and knowing your exact workflow. And one of the books my former department manager, who became a bit of a mentor to me, recommended before he left is Think Like a Data Scientist. And I'm only a little bit of the way through this book, but I can tell I'm going to get so much value out of this. It basically teaches you how to work with projects and rather than just concepts in a vacuum. So I will be making a review on this book on the channel coming soon when I'm done. And one day, it might be far off in the future, I do have ambitions of being in a management position for data science. So one book I did buy on a whim that I think will help me get closer to this if it's good, I have no idea. I didn't read the reviews or anything. It's called Step Up for Leadership in Enterprise Data Science and AI. So this basically teaches you how to lead people in the field of data science, as well as some overall general data science knowledge. So hopefully it's good, gets me one step closer on that route. And actually on the topic of general data scientists, like I tell you guys, I am a newbie. So that means I still have glaring holes in my arsenal. And one of those is I'm not very good with GitHub. It seems very basic, but I've never actually sat down and gone through GitHub like that because all I've ever had to do is just upload a project here and there. So I just want to sit down and make sure I know how GitHub works properly. That shouldn't take too long, but it is on my checklist. So guys, when I say I'm a data science newbie, I'm not joking. I literally only have one project uploaded 
and still literally have to double check how exactly <laughs> to upload. So I'm still at the very beginning of this journey. But I'll be honest, show you guys the whole thing. Side note, look at this. How crazy is that? 398. Mad. Thank you guys for all the support. Okay, now more specific. And I think this is probably my key result area for the year is mastering and narrowing down the domains that I want to go into. See, the thing with the education system, why most of us aren't the biggest fan of it, is because they have to be very general. They have to cater for everybody. So in my master's in data science, they didn't know what we were going to be. So they didn't know if he's going to be an analyst, she's going to be a data scientist, who's going to be a machine learning engineer, and all of that. And then within that, people have to know visualization. They have to know EDA. They have to know building models. And for our future jobs, it's all to different extents. So now that I actually have a job, it's pretty much the first time where I get to narrow down my domain and truly begin to become somebody who's really good at it and hopefully one day a master at it. So that's going to be a big focus for me in this year. And picking a domain might seem like it's actually going to narrow down the jobs you could possibly get. That might be true, but it will put you closer to the front of the queue for any jobs that are in your domain. So hopefully by the end of the year, I want to start feeling like when I'm assigned to a project, at work, or even if I'm applying to the job, I feel like I have that genuine internal confidence that when I go into this job or into this project, I'm going to genuinely be a difference maker when it comes to my data science skills, where you can actually see tangible results as a result of the work that I've done. So my domain at the moment is marketing and specifically social media marketing. So one of the key resources for me for this realm is going to be this book, Predictive Analytics for Marketers, which basically zeroes in on how data science is used within marketing. But beyond all of these books, I have these two podcasts that I will be listening to when I'm in the gym or just taking a walk and that sort of thing, because they do have episodes tailored for general data scientists, as well as stuff which is specifically for data scientists in marketing. Of course, during the year, there's also going to be reading a lot more Medium articles and data science YouTube videos that I can get some insight from. And I will be looking to make notes on anything I find useful. So I'm not taking in content passively. On top of that, I want to do at least two marketing specific projects, which are very end to end from scraping the data to visualizing it in something like Tableau. And I'll be doing tutorials for that on the channel and uploading them to my Git as well. Ah, the X factor. So being a great data scientist who's just a great data scientist is, well, great. But I'm beginning to realize one of the most important things you can learn as a data scientist is the ability to sell. And by sell, I mean the ability to sell your ideas and insights, as well as the ability to sell yourself. In my current role, a large part of my job is to help inform the company's marketing strategy. And to do that, I have to get insights from the data and find things that I think could have an actual impact and give them to the relevant people who help to do the decision making on the marketing strategy. But what I quickly realized is you could have all the insight in the world that you want, but if you aren't able to convince your line manager or whoever it is you're giving this data to, that what you found is important and will have an impact, you're gonna be talking to yourself. So if your boss has a gut instinct of what the best strategy is, but then your data says otherwise, if you go into the meeting, you're like, yeah, the data indicates this might be suboptimal because the R value is this and the P value is this. That's just going to go over your boss's head. They might just nod politely and then go with their gut instinct anyway, because with your data, you haven't been able to convince them that what you're saying is important and will have actual value. But I think that if you're able to sell your ideas using the following three points, you have a better chance of your insights actually being used. Firstly is the ability to visualize your data in a compelling way. So here's the facts. You and me are either data scientists or considering getting into data science. So we are absolutely fine with just seeing a table and interpreting it, or maybe just having an ugly matplotlib graph. But here's the reality. Most people, that stuff is not engaging. It's like film Film buffs, for example, somebody who's really into film, they might be fine just reading a script and they'll still get the emotional fulfillment. They'll be able to visualize everything in their head. But for the general public, we need to see the screen and the movie in order to, to get that emotional attachment to what's going on. So it's pretty much the same with data. 
non-data people need to be able to simply see what's going on so that they can interpret it and get the gist of it and see why it's important. So in the same breath, one of my key areas for 2023 is to improve my visualizations. And one of the big aspects of this is going to be learning Tableau. And on top of that, to support my learnings, this absolute classic over here, storytelling with data. And of course, I'll be giving you a little summary of this on the channel when I do finish it and take my notes. So selling my ideas with visualizations. Beyond visualizations is the ability to write reports and summaries in concise, interesting and emotive ways. So now selling my ideas and insights through the written word. So to support me in this, I've already signed up for a course on Skillshare on copywriting, which I think could be very important. And I'm also aiming to make 20 to 30 YouTube videos on this channel. So hopefully maybe you can see the script writing getting better as the year goes on and maybe even a little bit more compelling. But I guess you guys will be the judge of that. The last of the selling your insights point is the ability to sell your insights with your words. So this is getting better at presenting and that sort of thing. And again, 20 to 30 videos on this channel. Hopefully you see my uh, camera presence getting a bit better as the year goes along. Okay, so the final point, putting it all together, which is basically learning to sell myself. So this is building my profile as a data scientist. And this will include things like having a much stronger portfolio because I haven't updated my portfolio with projects since about halfway through uni and I'm a much better data scientist than that now. So I should be able to showcase that. And that'll be through coding projects, written summaries of books and that sort of thing for my LinkedIn, as well as my personal website. And again, having those projects up on my Git will help me just look like a more appealing prospect in the field of data science. So that's how my 1000 hours is gonna be spread. And I will be counting things like listening to podcasts in the gym, as long as I'm listening actively and occasionally making notes on any interesting points about it on my phone, doing projects will count, script writing, but mostly I want to spend most of my time learning maths and coding and that actual data science-y stuff. So that's my plan for 2023. If you wanna, I'd love if you left a little summary of your plans for 2023. At the start of 2024, I will be making a video on how this went for me. And trust me, I'm not afraid of failing and admitting my failures. So whether I succeed or not, I will be telling you exactly how this went. Thank you for giving me your time. And if you are a newbie data scientist, I have these two videos talking about everything you need to know for coding, for data science, as well as everything you need to know for maths, for data science. But I'll see you in the next one. Peace.